samples, okay? Remember, random is important for, for uh, statistical uh, measurements. So here's our, our common course strand for our groovy teachers. And our question is, uh, how can we generate and use random samples to represent a population? Okay, so, so uh, we're going to first use um, a calculator. Now, if you don't have one, because my kids don't, there's other ways to do this. So um, uh, we'll talk about those also. But if you do have a calculator... Uh, we did uh, uh, in the prior lesson we did um, uh, random samples or generate them by rolling uh, numbered cubes um, uh, we can also do um, numbers in a hat and I will do a demonstration of that here um, or, or, or using marbles or whatever or, or flipping a coin those are all good ways to use uh, random samples so so um, we're going to uh, first uh, start this off with uh, using a graphing calculator. Okay, so uh, the example here is uh, each of 200 students in a school will have a chance to vote on one or two names. One of two names, sorry, the Tigers or the Bears for a school's athletic team. Uh, a group of students decides to select a random sample of 20 students and ask them which name they intend to vote for. So whether it's the Tigers or the Bears, that's their only choices. So how can the group choose a random sample to represent the entire population of those 200 students, okay? So one way is we're going to use a graphing calculator. It's going to be this. It's going to be, I'll show you, here's a bigger picture of it right here. Um, we're going to use this uh, TI Texas Instrument 83. The 83s and 84s are identical. Uh, the 84s is a little bit better than the 83s, but they both um, uh, they both work great. So, so we're going to uh, simulate choosing 20 students at random from 200 using RTI 83 in this case. 83, 84, same uh, function. So, depending on if you have these in your in your class, that would be great. If you don't, then just give me a minute or so, and we'll get through this. So. We're going to first assign each of the 200 students 1 to 200. So, so um, each one is assigned a number. And so what we'll do next is um, uh, we'll go and, uh, and on the TI-83 or the 84, we're going to press math. Okay, so, so the math button is right here. Whoops. Uh, let's see if I can get that back up there again. Uh, oh, boy, we're not going to be able to see that. Okay. Um, Take that over here, maybe. Let's see if I can do that. No, we can't see it. So the math button is, uh, let me take that out, uh, is right, mm -mm -mm -mm, right there. You know what I can do is I can enlarge that. Let me do that. I can enlarge this picture right here. Sorry, um, this uh, program that I have is a little bit, uh, a little bit harder to see. So here's the math button right here. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to hit that. Okay, and then uh, it's going to give us a screen that looks like um, uh, this right here. Okay, and so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to scroll over right here. Let me scroll over. We're going to scroll over uh, right here using these arrows buttons right here. So we're going to hit arrow, 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 and we're going to scroll over and hit probability. Okay, so right here we want to hit probability right here. Okay. So um, after we hit probability, then we're going to scroll down and we're going to hit um, uh, number five. Number five is called random integer. So, so we want to do this as a random integer. So I'm going to scroll down to number five and we see rand int. Okay, and there's a parenthesis right there. So remember, we have uh, 200 students, and so we're going to do one at a time. So we're going to do one comma. Now somewhere on here, there's a, a comma button. Let's see. So um, uh, when I taught uh, AP statistics at Del Campo High School a long time ago, there is a comma button, and it's right here. So we're going to punch in uh, one comma 200. Okay, so that's our next uh, stroll right there. So one comma 200. And it's going to give us that, okay? And once we do that, we don't see these numbers yet, and your numbers will be different because you guys are all doing different random integers. I'm just going to choose these guys. So this would be student 43, student 93, student 75, student 178, uh, from 1 to 200 right there, okay? So now we're going to hit uh, the enter button, and the enter button is right here, okay? 
is down at the bottom right there. So we're going to hit this enter button 20 times and that's going to generate 20 different random numbers. Here's the first four right there, okay? So when we do that, uh, let's just pretend uh, uh, that of those 20 students that we picked and we surveyed that nine chose tigers. Okay, so the per uh, percent that chose the tigers was nine out of those 20 students. So nine out of 20, uh, I know 10 out of 20 is 50%, so nine out of 20 is 45%. So what can we conclude if we have uh, that sample of 20? Well, with that selection, um, both names are they're pretty equal. I mean, um, it's it's definitely um, uh, the bears would win. The tigers only got 45%, which means the bears got 55%. But it's pretty close, so so we might have to do a couple of more samples of that. And if your whole class did that, um, you'd get different samples, and then you can average all of those together. All right, so here's a, a, a different way to do that. Let's say um, that the 200 students are evenly divided among the voting for the Tigers and for voting for the Bears. So let's say um, uh, it's 50-50. So what we can do is we can generate a random sample using the same method in our graphing calculators, which we just did. So random integer, 1, 20. I'm sorry, 1, 200. And then hit Enter. Uh, 20 times and letting each number represent a vote and so what we could do is let the numbers 1 through 100 represent the votes for the Tigers and then the hundred numbers 1 through 101 represent the votes for the Bears and we can hit that uh, 20 times and, and do our tally so um, uh, to get our 20 numbers so this is easy enough for everybody to be able to do this uh, 10 times uh, for each kid if you have these graphing calculators and then tally the data, okay? So after doing this, so how many of the samples indicated that there were nine or fewer votes for the Tigers? And so that would be an exercise you guys would um, uh, do in class, and uh, because each class would be different, I don't, I can't do that with you guys. So it just depends on the class. So check your classmates' results and see see what the results are. Okay, it might even be the Bears or the Tigers uh, win. If it, you know, if they're even even. So, anyways. So uh, if we don't have a calculator, here's another way we can do this. Okay, remember we did uh, rolling a dice, we can do uh, marbles, we can pull numbers out of a hat, and that's what we're going to do here. So here's an example of a, of a tree farm that has 100 acres of square fields arranged in the 10 by 10 array. Okay, so, so here's 100 squares right here. So right here this says 22, and what this says is there's 22 trees in this uh, plot right here. Okay, over here there's 45 trees in this plot right here. All right, so let's go up here. Okay, so the, the farmer wants to know the average number of trees per acre. Each cell represents the trees on that acre right there. Okay, so we're going to enlarge that right here. And then, uh, so to simulate the random selection without a calculator, we're going to number the, the columns. Remember, columns go up and down like a coliseum. The coliseum have these columns that hold it up. So number the columns going across the top from 1 to 10, and then number the rows going down from 1 to 10. So here, I've done that here. Okay, so here's the columns numbered 1 through 10, and the rows numbered 1 through 10. And so what we can do is now write the numbers 1 through 10 on identical pieces of paper and place them into a bag or a hat or whatever and then pull out one piece, check the number and replace it. You gotta replace it back into the bag because the one piece will represent the columns at the top and then uh, when you put it back in then um, uh, the second piece will represent the rows going down. So we'll put, uh, we'll check, uh, pull out one piece, check the number and replace it in the bag and then pull out a number, okay? So uh, so let's say, um, uh, let the first number represent the table columns and the second number represent the rows. So for example, let's draw a 2, and I'm just showing you on the column right here, we'll draw a 2 and then a 3 and then represents uh, the, the uh, if we go over on the third column and then down 3, so right here, so here's my 2 and then go down 3, so uh, that would represent that there's 54 trees in that acre plot right there. So we'll repeat that process nine more times. And so um, what we can do is do that and record all the data. And the actual mean of all those 100 trees is 48.4 
uh, uh, trees per acre. So how, how does your answer compare to that right there? Okay, so you're going to have to uh, compare your answers with your classmates and, and everybody's going to be different, but if you do that um, uh, 10 times, you should get uh, a pretty close estimation of the 48.4. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense and, and take care.